All right. All right. Well, we should be live now. So uh, we are doing a live broadcast from the text help booth at the Georgia Educational Technology Conference. Anybody want to come around a little 10, 15 minute demonstration of some lesser known read and write uh, features. Uh, so uh, the resources for this session later on at any point, if you want to get to them, you can do that at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash RW tips, like read and write tips uh, that we're going to be talking about lesser known features that are built right into the read and write tool and how you and your students can be benefiting from those. So very quick little introduction. Hi, my name's Eric. I'm an educator from Ohio and uh, I do run the website Control Alt Achieve. Um, and today though, what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about is about some of the lesser known features of read and write. We're gonna start with a very, very quick overview of what read and write is. And then we're gonna run through five things and demonstrate each of them. I think sometimes we just forget where we don't realize these are part of the tool. So let's get on into this. So first of all, Again, if you missed it, bit.ly slash Kurtz RW tips will always get you back to the document. The document looks like this, and that document has all of the resources that we're going to be taking a look at here today. Awesome. All right. So first thing first, what is Read and Write? If you're not familiar with it, it is an extension for Google Chrome that provides assistive technology features to help your students, to help you. Basically, everybody can benefit from this. You can install it from the Chrome Web Store. Um, there is a free version that anybody is allowed to use. The free version has text-to-speech, hover speech, translator, and the practice reading tool. And anybody's allowed to use that. Um, as educators, you're allowed to have the complete full version at no cost at all, just by going to their upgrade form, filling it out and say, hey, I'm an educator. And then you can have all the buttons on the toolbar and in Georgia specifically, since we are at the Georgia Educational Technology Conference, uh, they have a partnership uh, with uh, Georgia's Department of Education that schools are allowed to have the full version for free for any students with an IEP. And there's a link to uh, that here as well that you can pull up to get more details on that. So with that said, yes, Read and Write does what we expect it to do. It reads text. So if I were to go to a website and say, oh, I want to read this article about uh, NASA's rover that landed on Mars. Yeah, I can come up and click on the Read and Write toolbar and I can say, I want to have this read aloud. I could come here and hit the play button. And the NASA Perseverance rover's 293 million mile. Now, that's the normal thing we think of. And that's awesome. That is something it does. But what else does the tool do? So let's look at a couple of the other buttons on there. So one of them is the audio maker button. And what this does is it lets you create and download an MP3 of what's being read aloud. So you as a teacher, you could use your totally free version that you get as a teacher, and you can make MP3s of articles or stories, and then use those any way you want with your students. So for example, if I were to come here and grab this text and click the audio maker button here, just give it a moment. It's doing it in the background. It's reading through it. It's generating the MP3. If I click on the MP3, it should launch that. Here it is. And it should start playing. The NASA Perseverance rovers 293 million months. So there is that. Awesome tool. Wonderful to have that as a feature. Another neat feature of this is screen masking. Now you may say, oh, I know about screen masking. Well, hold on. I want to show you something else that does. So screen masking. The idea is darken the screen except for a bar that you drag up and down so you can focus on what you're reading. Yeah, that's cool. Hit the button and just focus on that. But it does more than just that. Another cool thing about it is you can change the color. Some students might deal with Erlen syndrome or scotopic sensitivity syndrome where they have a hard time with the high contrast of black on white. And in normal times, people would take like a color transparency and put that on top of a uh, textbook to be able to read it better. Well, screen masking can change the color as well. So I could come in here, go into my settings, and from my settings, if I go to the screen masking, I could change the light, the reading light to green, for example. Well, now if I turn on screen masking, oh, I have to refresh it. Sorry, I always got, I always forget, refresh. Anytime you make a change, refresh. So I'll refresh and I'll pop it back open. But now, once that pops back open, 
and I go to my, oh, come on, now you're gonna make a, a liar out of me. Ah, uh, hit save again. Ah, uh, sorry guys. Usually I'm pretty good about being able to just turn it on and off, but we'll see here. Hopefully it will pop up correctly this time. And if not, no worries, uh, it does work. <laughs> so I'll go back to that. And yep, it's still showing white at the moment, but as you can see from my screenshot, it really does turn green. Uh, but I may just have to do, uh, I may have to turn it off and back on to really be able to see that. Okay, another cool feature of this is the vocabulary list feature. I love this feature. What it lets you do is highlight keywords in the article and then build a study guide for those words, including the definition, pictures uh, from picture dictionary and a spot for notes. So if I were to come in here and grab my highlighter and just grab a couple of keywords, it really doesn't matter what I choose here. Maybe I'll grab ancient and I'll grab, oh, let's grab spacecraft. I'm not even sure if all of these will have images with them. I'm just grabbing a couple of simple words here. Oh, let's see what else do I wanna grab? Maybe I'll grab date. The point is after I highlight these, I can now come over here and click on the vocabulary of this button. When I click that, it's gonna grab anything that I highlighted and it's gonna make a new Google document that has those words as well as a dictionary definition and images that go with them. So this is gonna pop open in a new tab and this Google document, I could do whatever with. I could share this document with my students. I could push it out through Google Classroom so they all get their own copy of it. And then they could come in and fill in their notes here as they are uh, reading through the article and wanting to fill in their own notes on some of these key vocab terms in the article. Awesome stuff. The fourth of the five tools we're gonna look at is the simplify page tool. So if a student is reading an article, this can remove distractions and clean up the page. You can also adjust the colors, the font, the spacing, and you can summarize the content. So if I come here to my same article about the rover, and I click on the simplify page button here, it's going to pull that up, clean up everything on the page. So I just have the core content, no advertisements, nothing else on there. And then if I want to, I could change things like I could switch the color scheme. If I wanted a different color scheme, that's fine. I could also adjust the font and the font size if I wanted to. But something I absolutely love about this is the ability to simplify the text. So if I use the simplify button here with the little minus sign, every time I click it, it is gonna start using AI to summarize this article until now it's just a blurb that gives me the gist of the article. So the student should still read the full article, but if they can do this to get the main idea, that's gonna be fantastic so that now they can say, ah, that's what I'm going to be reading or that's what I just read. So that's a fantastic tool that is built right in as well. Awesome, good stuff. Okay, well, the last thing we're gonna hit here is voice note. So voice note is a feature in the read and write toolbar that works inside of documents. So if I'm in a Google document, I can record my voice and drop it into the document for personalized feedback for my students. So for example, let's say we do that. Let's pull up a document. So here's one that is just a pretend George Washington report with some spelling errors and some grammatical errors. And let's say that I want to provide some spoken feedback for my student. Well, if I've got the read and write toolbar, all I have to do is select the text that I wanna leave some feedback on. So in this case, notice how the student has misspelled several words here. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Let's say I wanna give them some feedback about, hey, you gotta watch out about, about your spelling errors. Well, if I select the text here and then go up to the read and write toolbar, I can click on the voice note button and now I can record up to a minute. So I could come here and I could hit the record button. Hey, this is Mr. Kurtz, just want you to know, you need to watch out for spelling errors. Anytime there's a red squiggly under something that should be indicating it's a misspelled word, you wanna go back and review what that might be. At that point, it is now going to take that audio, save it and boop, drop it in as a comment on the side. And the student doesn't even have to have read and write to be able to play my comment, but, if they do, it's even easier because they get a happy little play button. If not, they just get a link to click on and that will play it. This should play that for us. 
hey, this is Mr. Kurtz, just want you to know. Now, this can also be used by students to practice fluency. So let's say this is a situation where the student needs to practice speaking. And so I've got an example here with German fluency, but it could be anything, you know. Uh, and let's say we want them to practice reading some of these things aloud. Well, they could use the exact same tool. I could come in here and say, okay, highlight the text, click on the voice note and practice saying the word, Guten Morgen. And now they could add that in. And when they turn that into as a teacher, you can go through and play all of their recordings to hear how well they pronounce these. Let's see how I did. Guten Morgen. Okay. And of course the teacher could also reply to those as well. So those are five lesser known features that are part of read and write. As a reminder to everybody here, you guys can always get to everything I just showed there at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash RW tips, like read and write tips. And we cover uh, some of these lesser known features. Uh, another reminder to you as educators, read and write is free for you. And for Georgia schools, uh, read and write is free for any student who is uh, who has an IEP. So hopefully this gave you some ideas on some of the features that maybe sometimes we we skip over a little bit, such as audio maker, screen masking, vocab list, simplifying, and voice note. Uh, I'm going to check real quick on the live stream and see if any uh, questions popped up over there. Just a hello. That's totally fine. That's awesome. Just was checking to see if we had anybody else on the live stream with a question, but. Thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. If you have any, anybody have questions here today, have you used the tool? Yeah. Yeah. So they went, I'm assuming they went to this page here for the free for teachers page. And from here, they came down and filled out, say, I want to do read and write. And then they come down and fill out their con their information and submitted it. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. But yeah, do note when you are signing up for that, I see they've tried to clarify that to make sure that you are using you know, the email that you're using for the extension, which in most cases, that should be your Google uh, email, uh, your Google account that you use for Gmail and Docs and stuff like that. Understandably, sometimes people have multiple accounts for various reasons. Uh, I would say it's it's the same email that you're using to install the extension and that's your school one, not your personal one that you would fill out there. See if there's any other questions that popped up. We do have some, we have a thank you, awesome. That's great. Just checking to see if there's any other questions that popped up there. Thanks for those who joined us live today. We're gonna go ahead and stop the live stream, but it's been a pleasure popping in with you here from the Georgia Educational Technology Conference to share a little bit about some of these lesser known tools in Read and Write.